It's not that I hate the Rolex Daytona. I like the Rolex Daytona. I get the allure, fine. But there are so many better watches, even from Rolex, at the price. I mean, you're talking about $25,000, $30,000. I can, I can get you a better watch and put money in your pocket. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. And today's episode is sponsored by our friends over at Huckberry. I absolutely love that store and more on them later. Um, today's episode, you know, it's about the Daytona. It's not about the Daytona. It's about everything but the Daytona, right? And the impetus is basically like me looking at prices and seeing still after the craze. And, and Daytonas were up in the 40s and they crashed, right? But they've been really stable in the high 20s. And I'm actually surprised. I, I, I thought that they were going to dip into the mid and low 20s for good. Uh, especially, you know, they're more out there on the market. Rolex is manufacturing them, right? And Rolex is allocating them and they're out there and the buzz is gone, but there hasn't been a flood yet and there hasn't been a crash and these watches are still worth somewhere between, you know, twenty five and $30,000 depending on condition and all that stuff. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, guys. And, and you know, I'm going to be talking today about the changing understanding of how much a lot of money is in the watch industry and and kind of like taking a step back and saying, can we demand a little bit more for our money? Can we, you know, can we admit that $25,000 is a lot of money and the least we should get for it is a $25,000 watch, right? The Daytona is not a $25,000 watch and I love it. I'm not trying to be one of those contrarian, you know, if they're trying to be obnoxious or whatever, but it's the truth. There are better watches. So today we're talking about those better watches. Let's start off with outside of the Daytona a little bit. And, and, and guys, if you've got Daytonas in your watch box, go ahead and put them on and enjoy them during this episode, right? Um, but let's start off outside of Rolex, okay? And we're going to get into some real Rolex opportunities. And I think one opportunity that is just insane, or really two opportunities, I think are insane. And it's dump your Daytona and get into this stuff. But let's try to paint a slightly more objective picture, right? Let's talk about what you should be able to get from a big brand, right? A, a brand with recognition at that price point at twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, right? There, there are two watches that come to my mind that really give you a great example as to what I'm talking about. One is by JLC, right? And this is just really one of the greatest reversos ever manufactured that is totally underappreciated. And, and, I, and I really recommend that you guys keep a lookout for this watch. This is called the Reverso Art Deco. From the dial, from the surface, it's just a reverso. It's a precious metal reverso, but just a reverso, right? But from the back, uh, it is one of the only reversos ever to have a hand engraved movement completely. And this is absolutely gorgeous. This movement is in rose gold, and it's just absolutely insane. Um, you know, I, I saw this watch for the first time many years ago, and I've only ever seen it once. They're really rare, definitely limited. I don't know, I don't know to how many, but these are great watches. Right now, they're hovering at $25,000. There's one on Chrono 24. I don't know if it's worth $25,000. I would venture to say that you could probably pick one up around 20, maybe even 17, right? But they're hard to find, okay? But it's gonna, it gives you an idea of like the level of watchmaking and collectability and rarity you should be getting at that price point at 25 grand, right? This is a better watch. It's a more precious watch. It's a more hand-finished watch. It's a, it's a watch from a, a truly great manufacturer, not some obscure name, right? JLC is known, right? It's not Rolex, but it's known, you know? And it's just, I mean, look at the look at the quality. Look at the craftsmanship. That's what $25,000 looks like. And again, I, I think you can get those watches for less, right? Those watches are appropriately valued, I think, around 20, 25 grand. Those are appropriately valued watches, right? But not uh, under or over, right? It's appropriate. Whereas the Daytona is way over. You can get a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot more watch in that Reverso than you can at the Daytona. Here's another watch. Bulgari's Octofinissimo. These watches, depending on the metal and the variation, range between, you know, thirteen and thirty thousand dollars. And on the upper end, you're talking about rose gold. And you're talking about one of the most interesting, uh, uh, you know, innovative designs, one of the most incredible designs. If your wrist can carry the watch, and it's a large watch because the bracelet is quite wide, but if your wrist can carry this watch, this is great watchmaking. The movement, the case, everything, the materials used, this is superior than the Daytona all day, every day. Not as complicated in its function. Although they do make chronographs, you can have around fifteen thousand dollars, sixteen thousand dollars, right? Not as complicated otherwise, but I hope you understand that, like ultra thin, what it takes to make those movements, what it takes to manufacture these watches, 
is a remarkable level of, of not only talent, but innovation of, of investment and development, right? This is amazing, the fact that this watch even exists, right? When other brands do ultra thin, it's not like this, right? It's not like this. Bulgari has done a, a you know, unbelievable job at producing, manufacturing, designing, everything here. And this is a truly original design as well, right? I mean, only a couple of years old. Dr. Phoenician was in a very old watch, and it's totally original, right? Not designed by Gerald Genta, but in its, in its you know, innovative approach to the, you know, sports watch integrated bracelet, it's second to none, maybe, right? Not to mention the fact that it's totally in line with historical Bulgari designs. That bracelet design goes back to the 80s, maybe even earlier, Right, amazing watch. That at fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, or in rows at thirty thousand dollars, is appropriately priced. Maybe even undervalued. Right, but okay. Let's say your your brain is set on Rolex. You're not interested in my JLCs. You're not interested in my Bulgaris. I get it. I love Rolex. I'm wearing my Regi GMT. Right. I'm not trying to say that you know we should all be right like artsy fartsy obscure Williamsburg people that are bored by Rolex. Right. When I'm in Germany, people kind of like scoff at Rolex because it's a little too much, too over the top. Right. I'm not saying that. To love Rolex is to be human. Right. To love Rolex is to be you know a, a an aware uh, uh, you know person. Right. I mean. Rolex marketing is, is is omnipresent. I mean, it's it's amazing, and their designs are so true, and they're great, right? I've said before, I've said in the past, all roads ultimately lead back to Rolex, no matter what you do, right? You can't even help it, right? Roads lead back to Rolex. Fine. So you want to stay in the brand? Well, what can twenty five or thirty thousand dollars get you at Rolex? It's a hell of a lot more than a still Daytona, I'll tell you that. Before we continue our conversation about Rolex Daytonas and all the alternative, better, more valuable watches you can buy, today's episode is sponsored by our friends over at Huckberry. And I'm really excited to announce that Huckberry uh, has, has initiated their latest giveaway. And they're giving away two first-class tickets anywhere in the world. And it's all a part of their travel initiative. Huckberry wants you to get out there and, and see the world. Again, it's first-class service. So that, that long trip that you may choose to, again, anywhere in the world will be uber comfortable. What makes it all the more comfortable and convenient, though, uh, is the one-stop travel shop at Huckberry, where they're equipping the world with everything you might need in your wardrobe on a trip, from amazing headphones and an extensive selection of travel bags to a full collection of clothes and footwear. I love this initiative. I consider myself extremely lucky to have traveled quite a bit in my life, and I, I think it's just so great and important that Huckberry is putting this initiative together to essentially make you do the same, right? To see the part of the world, the nook of the world that, that you've always dreamed about. Again, first class, and it's so easy to enter. All you've got to do is visit the One Stop Travel Shop. Any purchase of $75 or more enters you to win uh, those tickets. Again, anywhere in the world. It's limited to one entry per day, so I recommend that you keep stopping back into the shop all month. Uh, you can never go wrong at Huckberry. I, I can't tell you how much I have from their shop and how well it's held up from the uh, from the aprons I use in the kitchen to my, you know, beautiful wax coats. And it's, it's just really one of the great brands. So uh, head on over to Huckberry and enter to win your two first class tickets anywhere in the world. Here's the first one I want to talk about within the Daytona category. And it's a better Daytona. It's a precious metal Daytona, white or yellow gold on a leather strap, right? You can have these watches between... Twenty-one and twenty-eight thousand dollars, right? Depending on the dial, depending on the condition, these watches are an absolute steal on the market, and 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 one of the best parts because it's a Rolex Daytona, they're not rare, right? They're unusual watches in white gold, and they're kind of unusual with these dials because no one buys them, but they were produced en mass, so you can go on the market and buy one. Right. This is not like the JLC where it's like, oh, there's one and and no one's competing in price. So some guy's going to hold it and he wants 25. And I really think it's worth 18. No, these watches, there are you know, so many on the market, thousands and thousands and thousands of the market. So there's competition to keep the price right approachable or relatively speaking calm. Right. There isn't that scarcity that drives prices through the roof, like it's done with Cartier recently and Piaget and all these other brands and Rolex and many scenarios when it comes to really, really odd watches. But right. These watches are an amazing opportunity, right? They made them, generally speaking, in, in Arabic numeral, very right? sporty, Daytona-esque Arabic numerals, right? Or as my friends from Brooklyn would say, just regular numbers, 
right? Remember that story? That's a great one. Um, but also in regular old stick baton, um, they made them in mother of pearl. They made them in stone dials in their beach collection, obviously more expensive. They made them in black. Rolex, you know, white gold Daytonas are, I think, some of the greatest watches on the market. I think they're some of the greatest value on the market. I happen to love that they're on leather, right? And, you know, I could see, again, people love uh, or people are need, rather, um, you know, as a, as a, as a colleague of, of mine would put it, uh, an emotional cosigner. They need other people to tell you it's cool before they put their money there. It's a shame, but it's true. It's definitely true, right? And I could understand a couple of years ago, people saying, ah, the Daytona, the bracelets, the part of it, the bracelet, the bracelet, the bracelet. I don't want a Daytona on a strap. Well, one of the hottest watches out there, one of the coolest watches that everyone loves is the Daytona on Oyster Flex, right? It's a, it's a new Daytona ceramic, you know, on a strap, basically. And it's hot. Everyone loves it. They just don't know that they, by that same logic, they, all, they also ought to look at, right, these, these white gold models and yellow gold models for that matter. They're amazing. Right. And, and keep in mind, those Oyster Flex watches that everyone loves, those are way more expensive, you know, 35, 40 grand. Right. And they're amazing. God, I love the Oyster Flex. Those if I if I had to get a Rolex Daytona right now, that would be in the that would be in the running for sure. I love those watches. God. Right. But if you're talking about bang for buck and value and, and whatever, if that ten thousand dollar delta means something to you and uh, it means a hell of a lot to, to me. Right. To most people. Um, the white, the, these, these precious metal on leather of these previous generations are no brainers. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. Here's another watch I want to talk about. Another, I think, severely undervalued watch is the Yachtmaster in rose gold, specifically. Offered in both 37 and 40 millimeters in size. Watches fit super well. Now you've got your Oyster Flex. You've got a newer watch, a more modern Rolex, right? With this super cool bezel. Add to it. Again, precious metal. Obviously, you guys know I'm a precious metal guy. It has rich factor. It's got, it's got clout factor, right? You see that, that watch at a bar, and it's like, that's a player. You know, not to say Daytona isn't a player, not to say you're trying to be a player. I don't mean that. But there is a factor there, whether or not you care or not. It's definitely a thing. That's a it's a rich watch. It's a rich watch. OK, add to it. I actually think it's a really interesting watch. I think that these, you know, yacht masters with these, you know, bezels on the Oyster Flex are the best yacht masters ever manufactured. They're, they're, they're not just like, you know, submariners with a platinum bezel like they used to be. Those watches are great too, undervalued severely. But, you know, this was new. This was more, you know, innovative, more, more interesting, more forward thinking, right? This was Rolex really saying, what do you think our clients would want to wear on a yacht? Right. And the answer, of course, is is not leather and it's not a bracelet either. Right. The, the answer is this, you know, rubber technology and with this, you know, with, you know, dynamic strap that allows for airflow and everything like this is a comfortable watch. It's comfortable, it's casual, and yet it's still rich. And you can have these watches between 20 and twenty five thousand dollars, depending on size and condition. Right. The twenty thousand and thirty seven and twenty five thousand and forty. Fantastic watches. There is no world in which I would recommend, and again, I love the Daytona, so relax, but there is no world in which I would say, yeah, the Daytona represents you know, more value. The Daytona is a better buy at 28 than the Yachtmaster is in rose gold at 25. No world, no world. You know? And I love the Daytona, again, I love the Daytona at its retail price, 14 and a half or whatever it is, 15.1, they keep changing it every six seconds, I don't know, right? But, but I guess because I started my career in watches, in affordable watches, in value-driven watches, I will never not be actively looking for better value. That's who I am at my core. I love nice things. Everyone knows that. I, I, love, I love expensive shit, right? Who doesn't? But I'm a value-driven guy. Totally. Right. I want the nicest, you know, uh, I mean, listen, sometimes, you know, your heart does desire, you know, the expensive thing that is not value driven. That does happen. Right. For sure. Um, but in all other examples, in all other times, you have to ask yourself, like, can I get more for my money? Right. Can I can I get more for my money if I think a little bit harder or if I don't go with the pack? Because the pack drives prices straight up, straight up. 
you know, and, and then everyone wants to say, oh, I missed the boat again. I missed the boat again. Yeah, because, you know, you can't keep up with the pack because it, it, it takes you time emotionally to commit to something and you need to see other people committing to it. So you, you're always going to miss the pack, right? If it takes you time, you need to see it and then it takes you time, right? So you need the stimulus, you know, and then you need breathing room to then like emotionally make sense of it and take action, right? Think about that. It, it, it's, it's, that's the journey. That's why you always miss the boat. And that's why I tell people, you know, not to say don't buy what you love, not to say all that stuff. I mean, it's only money, right? If you've got it, what's the hell the point apart from enjoyment, right? I mean, definitely, but it's like, don't you sometimes want to kind of think a little bit for yourself and not to say that buying a Rolex is thinking, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I could make statements all day and they're not absolutely true, but they're very largely true, right? I mean, uh, buying a, a rose gold yacht master for $25,000 is definitely when you were considering a Daytona is definitely an odd move. That is not what most people are doing, you know, uh, in, in that world, you know, and, um, I'm not saying you should do it. But I'm definitely saying that if you're looking for better value, there, there is way better value than your Daytona on your wrist, way better value out there for 25, 30 grand, and even at Rolex. And no one really understands that. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you want more thoughts on the industry behind the veil, uh, go ahead and subscribe to The Zero. It's our private podcast community on Patreon. You can join in a seven-day free trial and watch all the content and then delete the content. I, I, I don't care, but I want to see you on over there. And, uh, and if you want to say hi, uh, I can't answer all the YouTube comments, but I can engage with you over on Patreon. It won't be immediate, but I promise I'll get back to you in a couple of days as soon as I can. And we'll have uh, an interesting conversation about watches. I hope to see you on over there and that's it. straps, um, as many of you should know, bring a whole world of potential to mix up your watch collection. They breathe new life into watches. They help you pull out different colors. They, they give them new personality. Straps can be uh, very addictive. I know people with two watches and 10 straps because it adds so many facets to a collection in a, in a fairly you know, easy and fun way. So that's why they become such a part of the Theo and Harris you know, culture and identity. I think we sell more exotic straps than, than almost anybody because I just love them so much. I love sharing them with you.